Okay, hello everyone. Um, so, uh, this is uh, the head for my uh, five axis null design. So, um, I'm going to explain it, I'm going to show it, and then I'll go in and show the details of the design. So, the reason that I wanted to make this was because I spent a lot of time renting out uh, a five axis BC bridge mill. And it's to do really light stuff. It's not to do metal, it's to do foam and to do wood for uh, fixturing and parts and, uh, you know, art and stuff like that. And so what I wanted to do was just make one so that I have it in-house. I'm not cutting anything heavy, so uh, a lot of it could be 3D printed. Um, and anyway, so this is the first revision of the head. Um, and yeah, so without further ado, I will show you it moving. I'm going to hold on to it. So you can see it's not moving over its full range right now. I just have it kind of moving back and forth to show the motion of it. Um, so how it's being driven is by uh, this guy right here. Um, uh, so this is a, uh, a slush engine hat, stepper motor driver on top of a Raspberry Pi. The reason for this is that the mill is going to be really big and uh, this way I can just run an ethernet cable and power. I don't have to run all the uh, stepper motor wires, you know, over eight meters or whatever. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop it and then I'm gonna go in um, and actually explain the design. Uh, so first I'm gonna power this off. Um, okay, so we'll start, uh, we'll start here. Um, so this is what uh, I'm driving it from. So it's got two stepper motor channels um, and then this just powers the Pi as well. So I can just run this off 24 volts or whatever power supply I'm using. Um, to drive the other stepper motors off of. Um, probably I'm going to drive everything off 24 volts. Um, so yeah, so anyway, that's what's driving the steppers. So now let's take a look at the design. Uh, this thing's actually pretty cool. Um, so I'll start with the spindle. Uh, this is just one of those uh, low-cost DC spindles uh, that you can, get, you can get online. You can get them from uh, eBay or you can get them from, I don't know, all over the place. Uh, they're pretty generic. Uh, they're nice because they're very, very quiet. They're not like those uh, handheld routers that you buy at, um, you know, department stores. Uh, they're they're much quieter, and that's kind of why I like this. Um, and it's got a collet up here, so I can put different size bits in it, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, so the first thing that's important is if we look at this, the center axis of the Z uh, is in line with this, so that as we rotate this. Uh, this is going to stay in line, and what that does is it makes the kinematics of this machine a lot simpler, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, so the first axis is this one uh, here. Oh, by the way, the name of the machine is Bridge Boy, like a bridge mill, Bridge Boy. Um, so anyway, so this is the the head of it. So this uh, rotates. This would be, uh, I guess, the B axis. Um, yeah, and it'll rotate all the way down to here. Uh, it doesn't really ever need to, and then it'll rotate over to here. How it's being driven is by this stepper motor down here, which goes and drives this one, which drives this big 3D printed timing gear up here. The next axis is uh, the C axis, or the one about the Z axis down here. This is the almost the same concept. Um, sorry, this is a mess. Uh, we have uh, a stepper motor down here, um, our timing pulley, and then another big 3D printed timing pulley which gives us our motion. And I've tested this and it moves pretty fast and the stepper, these steppers provide enough torque uh, to kind of drive this thing in most applications. So how it homes itself uh, is also pretty neat. So this has a limit switch right here and then there's a little bump in here. You can hear it click when it homes. Uh, so it's going to be a nice repeatable homing. And then this one, if you look in here, we can see the homing there. Um, so one of the things we may have to do is make sure that we're always homing from the right direction. Uh, that's going to be the only trick. But the nice thing is because we get two bumps out of that, uh, we might be able to tell what direction uh, we're coming from. Um, so the design. Uh, oh yeah, and it's and it goes on to uh, the Z-axis is going to be made out of 60, 60 millimeter uh, aluminum extrusion. Um, pretty standard. You can get this stuff on eBay or uh, from all kinds of different suppliers. It's pretty easy. Um, to get a hold of. Uh, so first of all, excuse how dirty this thing is. I meant to keep it clean, but I just, I have really dirty hands today. Um, and I just finished assembling it. So this is printed out of nylon. Uh, so it's very, very tough. Um, I have cracked it in a couple of places right here uh, where the walls are very thin. 
Uh, I'm going to have to change those. Those are supposed to just be the flanges for the timing belt. But other than that, everything's been very solid. And I've been uh, pressing parts into this and stuff like that. Um, but it's made up of actually very few components, uh, despite how uh, complicated I guess it might look. Um, the first one is just this part here. This clamps on um, our spindle. Uh, then this here is just one piece that goes through to here. And then the timing pulley bolts into it from the other side. Um, and this, and then inside of here, the motion is very, very smooth, and that's because there's a huge bearing inside of this. So everything inside here um, is just a bearing, uh, and you can maybe kind of see it through there. I don't know. Um, and then this this big piece is just a giant L bracket. This was kind of the biggest, most arduous thing to print, um, just because it is very, very large. Uh, this is printed with uh, SLS, um, so it. Uh, I'm hoping that um, the design for this is going to be open. So I hope someone tries to print this out of ABS or something else. Um, so anyway, so we go down here, and again it's the same thing. So we've got a bearing housed behind this timing gear, which this runs on. And again, it's very, very smooth, and there's no play in it because it's just a giant bearing. Um, and uh, it does add weight to the system, but uh, this doesn't need to do much because it's rotating this. Um, and this doesn't have too much of a moment of inertia because the stepper motor is centered, um, as well as the spindle is centered as well. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the design. Uh, so this is just the head. Uh, the full uh, build of the thing is going to be um, a big ball screw thing made out of aluminum extrusion. Uh, that's not really going to be the complicated part. I think that this building this part was uh, was probably the most tricky thing. Um, the de again, the design of this, I'm calling Bridge Boy. Uh, maybe you can't really see that. Bridge Boy, very cool. Um, so the design of this, my intent is to have it open source. Um, not my intent, it is open source. Um, so uh, below this video there's a link to uh, the Fusion 360 online thing where you can download this. Uh, some of the fasteners and stuff are missing. Um, I just, Fusion 360 is not great with putting fasteners in. Uh, you can't like copy a part with mates and stuff like that, so I just left a lot of the fasteners out. Um, if someone wants to put them in, that'd be pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, so one of the other components of this that really uh, makes it robust is you can see that there's these thermal inserts just all over the place and these are uh, a really really nice way of getting threads in 3d printed parts whether you're printing with ABS or whether you're printing with nylon um, it makes it very very easy to first of all add threads because all you have to do for example this is where we're gonna run some wires um, I forgot to put a hole here so I just punched a hole with the drill and then stuck this thermal insert in and now I can tie on the uh, the wire hold down part um, so yeah, so those thermal inserts are a key component. Um, and the other thing is that they're always mounted on the opposite side of wherever they're pulling towards. Uh, that way they never get pulled through and there's always a smaller diameter hole on the other side. So that this bearing retainer ring here, um, it's hard to again see. Please go check out the model, it's really cool. Um, uh, these bolts go straight through and they're pulling those towards them. The other way to do this would also be to use insert nuts. The reason I didn't like in want to use insert nuts is just because I don't like to fiddle too much. And insert nuts, you kind of have to push them in there and they turn sideways and it, it kind of drives me crazy. Um, so I just, I went with these. They cost a little bit more, but they are, uh, they are really nice. Um, so uh, the cost to build this thing was actually pretty low. Um, it's not too expensive. I think the spindle was maybe $120. Um, printing all the parts, uh, it really depends where you go. Um, if you print them online, it's probably going to be very expensive, probably six or seven hundred dollars. Or if you have them printed locally, uh, it might be a bit cheaper. Um, I'm hoping that someone tries and tests this out. Uh, it will fit inside the build volume of a standard 3D printer. Um, so I'm hoping that someone actually goes and prints this and see how well it does. Um, I'm pretty worried though that if this was printed non-SLS, it would just shear off right here. Um, because this is this is very thin. This works with this printing method, but not with uh, um, maybe um, so maybe uh, ribs could be added going down across here um, or something like that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that's the design. Uh, you got to see it moving. I unplugged it, so I'm not going to move it again. But uh, uh, yeah, um, I'll hopefully have a video of the whole thing up and running. Um, it's going to be pretty big. Uh, it'll probably have a build volume of about 2 meters by 2 meters by 1 meter. 1 meter on the z-axis. Um, and yeah, so uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching.